And we're joined by Joel Skousen. He's a political scientist specializing in the philosophy of law and constitutional theory. He's also a designer of high security residences and retreats. He's designed self-sufficient and high security homes throughout North America and has consulted in Central America as well. He's the author of Strategic Relocation, North American Guide to Safe Places, that we sell both the film we produced and the book, big coffee table book, uh, glossy pages, the best analysis out there at InfoWarsStore.com. He also assists people who uh, live near a large city to develop contingency retreat plans. Joel was raised in Oregon, later served as a fighter pilot for the U.S. Marine Corps during Vietnam era, uh, prior to being uh, his design firm in high security residences. Uh, during the 80s, he took leave of absence to serve as the chairman of the Conservative National Committee in Washington, D.C., and concurrently served as executive director, editor of Conservative Digest. JoelSkousen.com, WorldAffairsBrief.com. He's the editor of World Affairs Brief. Dot com, and he joins us to cover news uh, and the waterfront and to take a few specific focused questions, not, 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 not comments or diatribes because we're limited on time uh, today from callers. That's coming up at about 45 after 800-259-9231, 1-800-259-9231. Now, we never get into the social engineering with Joel Skousen and uh, the attack on the family and uh, Obama acting as a dictator, basically opening up the borders right now, all this unprecedented stuff. We need to talk about geopolitical and the price of oil and Ukraine and Russia and Greece. And we're going to hit all that first because he's an expert on that. Um, but I want to cover the waterfront on a bunch of topics with Joel today to pick his brain. And Joel Skousen joins us via video Skype. If you're a radio listener, you can go to Infowars.com forward slash show. And you can see Joel as well. Or if you're a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber, you can also see him there. But we have a free feed for the radio listeners during the daytime broadcast. But you can also subscribe and get the commercial free podcast. We appreciate the subscribers out there that helped fund this for everybody else. But please take advantage of it. Send that link Infowars.com forward slash show to your friends, to your family, at the end of your emails. You can wake folks up by just pushing our information in their direction, and that's how we grow via leaps and bounds. But as I said, going now to Joel Skousen, editor of World Affairs Brief, uh, there's so much to cover, but I want to get into Russia, get into Ukraine, get into ISIS. Uh, with you first, get into what's happening with the dollar, with oil, with Greece. Uh, Joel Skousen. Well, thank you very much, Alex. It's uh, really great to be with you. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of uh, hype going on about the collapse of the euro, about uh, nuclear war being imminent with uh, Russia over Ukraine. And I continue to say, you know, there's a longer term globalist agenda here that uh, is not going to allow for these things to be imminent. And that's proving the dollar to collapse, uh, the failure of the BRICS nation to be able to you know, bring down the dollar, uh, or what's going on in Greece right, right now, where we saw, uh, as I predicted, the European Union gave in and gave them another four-month extension again. It wasn't six months that Greece wanted. Uh, the only concession that they gave was that Greece gets to pick their own austerity to by the troika and so that's a you know a small tactical diplomatic uh, battle they still have to come up with something today to tell how they're going to stop uh, the continued tax evasion and uh, redu reduction of civil service but as i've said you know the longest agenda here is globalism and global and the eu is the the it's the flower of globalism it's the show place they're not going to let that go down and uh, were to exit the uh, the eurozone it's not i'm not convinced in fact i'm fully convinced that the eu would even though other countries may want to follow suit i think the euro is showing sign or the eu is showing sign of doing whatever it takes to keep greek in to keep the exit from ha handling or from uh, from going on and I think we'll continue to see that. Doesn't mean that things are solved. Greece has long-term problems. It's not going to be solved by this additional bailout, but it does kick the can down the road so that they can, uh, and there'll be other major crises that come. Sure, but in the future, this global debt is all untenable. 
and you got Alan Greenspan saying something big's coming. You have all these other elites saying, get ready for something big. Obviously, they engineer these things to consolidate power. Uh, do you think it's going to be inflation? Do you think it's going to be deflation? Do you think the bubble's going to go on? And if so, for how long? Because most experts, John Williams, you name it, now say, uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts has been saying three, four years forever. Now he's saying it could be this year or next year that we see a global meltdown. Yeah, I know they, they have been saying this, and they've been wrong for three and four years uh, running. And it's because they haven't really looked at what does it take to destroy answer these things several times in the world affairs brief um i've never got a suitable response from williams or peter schiff or gerald Salini on my major objections number one is that for hyperinflation which is the major way to take the dollar you've got to really have two things you've got to have a very modest money supply that can be doubled or tripled in a year uh, to depreciate and make it the dollar become worthless, but that isn't possible with the dollar. There's over 200 trillion monetized dollars, maybe even 300 tr trillion, and there's over a thousand trillion non-monetized contractual dollars out there. The Fed could print over 20 trillion a year and not exceed 10% of the money supply, and that isn't hyperinflation. And then for hyperinflation to occur, the second thing has to occur. You got to have some kind of automatic indexing automatic way for common people to raise their income to keep pace with inflation otherwise you don't ever accumulate this full of hundred dollar bills that are worthless because you don't have any way to get those excess dollars that's right they have been expert at creating real depressions in the economy so that people never become wealthy enough to actually accumulate the excess dollars uh, that said though I do see real inflation in some of the goods and services out there, and I don't think if the economy wasn't contracting uh, that, uh, that they'd be able to stop inflation. I'm no economist. I just simply see them with their different computer models managing things, and I just wonder how long this can go on, Joel. Yeah, I think actually can keep it going on a lot longer than we think. For example, the purpose of the zero debt policy is to keep the debt crisis from coming to a head. They can postpone that till after 2030 by keeping interest rates near zero, because that means that the interest on the debt does not accumulate faster. If they inflation, and, and John Williams is right, real inflation is between six and seven to eight percent now, if they can keep it that way, there won't be a hyperinflation. Um, if they want to go, you start to have an inflation mentality where people want to get rid of their dollars, want to buy something, it would heat up the economy. But most people could not keep pace. That creates stagflation like we have in the 70s where people can't afford to buy. They stop buying. If gas went to $10, people would stop buying again. And so the Fed shows every sign of, in fact, being very, very cautious to not let inflation get over. They've, they've got the advantage also in that there's a great deal of deflationary forces going on right now in the economy, which is balancing out. I think inflation would probably be 12 to 14 percent if it weren't for the deflationary. That's, that's what I was just getting at, just from a layman's perspective. So, Joel Skousen, let me ask you this question. Geopolitically, how are things going for the Anglo-American power bloc versus the other blocks? Because we have numbers out, four out of 10 Americans are one bill from disaster, CBS News. I mean, in the real economy, we've been in a recession slash unequally distributed depression for a long time. But in certain corporate jobs or certain government jobs, people are still doing quite well. So it seems like they've created a new artificial class system. That is exactly right. We have a selective recession right now. There's a lot of people with a lot of money. You look at the stock market, over 18,000 now. There's a, this is the money in the big speculative economy. These people get nearly free money from the Fed that they can invest in these speculative economies and make 15 to 20 percent. Why should they invest in a lot of money being spread around the economy. The movie houses are full. The restaurants are full. And yet there's 20 percent real unemployment. And But even that isn't like the Depression, where you have 25%. In the Depression, nobody had any reserves. There wasn't anything, you know.
as in today's world, you've got food stamps, you've got unemployment compensation, you've got relatives to live with, people have three or four televisions, they've got two or three cars. There's a tremendous amount of reserves in this in economy after 40, 50 years of inflation that is in fact making it more resistant to the dire things that happen in the, That's right. We've been uh, such a wealthy n nation that there's a lot of stores of wealth. People are living with their parents longer. But if you look at the demographic trends and if you look at the savings of younger people, I do see this coming to a cataclysmic collapse somewhere down the road. I mean, it can't go on forever. That is correct, Alex. It can't go on forever. The key is, can the powers that be, can the Fed keep milking the bailouts along? And can they keep managing the money supply along until war comes? You see, then they they escape the blame for this. All right, Joel, your 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 Skype's breaking up really bad. All of a sudden, we're going to keep you on video Skype, but uh, dial you on the telephone as we go to break. Here, we're going to come back with Joel Skousen. This is really important information. He's talking about uh, what we have is a computerized, technocratic, organized economy, and as Google. And all these systems get more and more into our lives, they're going to be able to game the system that much more. But in my view, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, and I see it only being a bigger implosion and spectacular crisis when it comes. Stay with us. Why the establishment has engineered it, and where this country is in the future. And the huge preparations for civil oppression we see going on, we'll do that in the next segment, but getting into Russia, getting into the Middle East, the ISIS threat, clearly created and given a safe harbor by the West, the different power vacuums uh, that are being battled over by Iran, by Saudi Arabia, are we really at war with ISIS? Is it blowback? Has it gotten out of control? Or is there something bigger? I want to get Joel Skousen's take on that, Joel. Well, thanks, Alex. Uh, ISIS is, as you said, a, a Western intelligence engineered uh, crisis. Essentially, Al Qaeda was becoming old hat. Everyone was claiming to be Al Qaeda and, and nothing was ever happening domestically to cross the border. Uh, you know, I've questioned that for years. If we had real terrorism and we got a wide open border with Mexico, what's keeping Al Qaeda from coming across the border daily and blowing up electrical pylons or blowing themselves up in malls? And what's keeping ISIS from coming over to do that? It's just unexplainable, except for the fact that these intelligent or, or these terrorist organizations at the top at least are controlled by the governments, and they are not giving orders to do so. And the reason is that it would get in the way of the social agenda of engineering a democratic majority through millions of Latinos crossing the border. If we had terrorism coming across the border, the Americans would demand that shut that border down immediately. And that's why they're not allowing terrorism to come across. Uh, they control to the top. They don't control necessarily. In other words, the normal terrorist doesn't know that uh, the top leadership's controlled by the U.S. intelligence, British intelligence, working through Israeli uh, Mossad agents, uh, Arab agents uh, trained by Israel. But that's really the reality of what we're doing here. And all of these ISIS videos are staged. I mean, this latest one was just a joke with the 20 so-called Christians beheaded. You see these ISIS characters in black almost towering a third the height over these uh, supposed, uh, you know, Christian. That That's right. We've looked at it. It's blue screen. Even Wired Magazine six, seven years ago had to come out and admit their video analysts looked at the NQTEL videos they were releasing of Adam Gadan, the son of the head of the ADL, who's supposedly the leader of Al-Qaeda now, a Jewish Al-Qaeda member. And the Al-Qaeda video was put out in the Pentagon video layer with their logo. It was the same produced video at the same time. Yeah, these are professionally produced videos by Western video experts. Uh, terrorists don't have these kinds of uh, capabilities to do this. Uh, really, the reason for creating ISIS was, as I think I've explained before on your show very carefully, Israel has been passed by the globalists ever since 2004 to attack Iran. They've said, we can't do it until you take down Syria. Uh, two years ago, they were set to take down Syria with that no-fly zone. That's when uh, Kerry made the mistake in the London press conference by 
uh, when the reporter asked him, is there anything that Syria can do to evade this? He said, well, sure, they could give up their chemical weapons. And wham, Syria and Russia said, we accept. And all of a sudden, in one mistake, Kerry derailed the entire rationale for going into Syria. So that's when they began to create ISIS in order to justify a backdoor approach to getting into Syria. We create a new terrorist organization. Basically, they divided the, uh, the rebels in Syria into two groups, say, you're going to be the uh, existing rebels, and you're going to be the new group called ISIS, and we'll set you off into Iraq. But you come from Syria, so we'll have an excuse to get back into Syria to attack ISIS. And, and now they're the announcing reason. all of that, and we talked about this last year and predicted it. It's now happening. It also throws the military off, the rank and file, who were really getting upset two years ago about openly backing al-Qaeda. Now they have a reason to go back in the region. Oh, and while we're at it, call in airstrikes for the good Syrian rebels. So exactly as we said they would do it, they're now doing it. That's right. They've got uh, Turkey involved in, uh, in direct uh, uh, shipping of arms and ammunition and funds and things to uh, both sides, ISIS and the so-called uh, moderate rebels. Uh, they're all controlled by Western intelligence through Israeli agents who are peppered the area with uh, very highly trained Arab Muslim radicals that they've trained to go in and direct these things and to be the recipients of various funds. So this is a very directed uh, false flag attack uh, of ISIS. But it is still meant to keep Americans diverted from the real crisis in the future, which is Russia and China, as they continue to build for a strike against the West. I do not believe that Ukraine is going to trigger that directly. Uh, I think this is a three or four year process. All right, stay there. We got to go to break. Yeah. Long segment coming up. We'll segue into the detonator for World War III. Is it Ukraine? Is it North Korea? What's really happening in Ukraine? Joel Skousen's expert opinion. He knows what he's talking about, folks. We'll be right back and take your phone calls. I'm Alex Jones. Joel Skousen is our guest, worldaffairsbrief.com. And your calls are coming up here in just a few minutes. Specific questions for Joel Skousen. 800. 259-9231, 800-259-9231. Joel, I want to finish up with Russia and China and geopolitical issues uh, and just get your take on the eugenics, anti-human, anti-family, anti-male, political correctness. People say, oh, silly political correctness, but it's really designed to do something more, curtail language and just shut people down and teach a form of ninnying knowledge of obsessing on what people say and being offended to shut down real debate. But before we go there, finishing up with Russia and what you think is happening in Ukraine. Well, we are seeing, as I continue to predict, that uh, Russia is being let to have a pass here. Uh, they are in really open invasion now within um, uh, Ukraine with limited troops, but highly trained troops. Uh, Ukraine is actually sabotaging their own version of the war. The generals have leaked out. They're not allowed to win this. Uh, they're not allowed to put in sufficient troops to win anything. It's a, a phony war. But, you know, we continue to battle the major propaganda within our own movement, Alex, of those, and, and these are sincere people, most of them. I mean, the Eric Zeus's and the Lindmans are pro-Russian uh, leftists who will continue to claim that Russia has no sins, that Putin has no sins, that Castro has no sins. This is just a, a globalist conspiracy against these innocent countries, but it is not. The globalists are not innocent. They want to provoke war, but they really don't want to, in fact, engage Russia. They want the, uh, Russia to continue to look worse uh, as they move through, and Russia is a predator nation. Russia is in Ukraine to take back Ukraine before World War III, and you'll see that after Ukraine has is, is taken at least half of Ukraine, they probably won't get through completely to western Ukraine, but I think they'll get it surrounded with Moldova. Fully half of Ukraine will fall to the new Russia, and then they'll start working on the Baltics. All the while, I'll tell you, NATO will do nothing, and the U.S. will do nothing. Sending arms to Ukraine will do nothing because there's no way that they can be used as sophisticated arms without training. It'll be, if anything, a giveaway to the Russians who will capture a lot of those weapons. And I continue to insist, though, that the anti-globalists, of which I count myself as one, um, 
certain of our members on it are incorrect when they continue to hype that this was a Western a promulgated coup. It's true that the Western governments when they're facilitating some of the opposition, but this was in fact a Russian coup to the core. A year ago, almost this week, we saw the, the, the unexplainable happen where the opposition was allowed to win because the riot police run by the pro-Russian Yan Yanukovych regime was, were ordered back to the barracks, giving the opposition the free run of the governmental uh, palace, the uh, governmental buildings. And then on the Saturday following that day, the pro-Russian party of regions ousted their own president. It would be as if constitutional conservatives had been rioting and protesting in Washington, D.C. for three months, and all of a sudden the Marines abandoned the White House let us walk through the White House, and the next day the Democrats ousted Barack Obama. How believable would that be? But that's exactly what happened in Ukraine. It could not have been a Western coup, because the Western opposition had no powers to order the bear coup back to the barracks and to order the Republic or the, uh, their version of the Democratic Party to oust their own leader. And that's why I say this is a false Western, pro-Western government, particularly sabotaging the war, working in combination with Russia to eventually let Russia take back Ukraine. Now, Joel Skousen, I agree with you on probably 97% of what you have to say. And on this subject, I get your perspective. What you're saying is true. But let's pull back. When this all started a year ago, I went and showed the clips of the State Department saying we've put $5 billion in the last 15 years. George Soros made statements on CNN uh, on, on different shows that he was involved in the destabilization. They want to destabilize, have the two sides fight with each other, let Russia carve off a piece of it in probably some secret deal. Then the EU can come in and say, we've got to resurrect this and bail out the EU with Federal Reserve money claiming that it's not an EU bailout, but that it's a Marshall Plan. Well, we just saw... Tens of billions already sent in. They're calling it a Marshall Plan. So it's a larger destabilization of the whole region to then launch the new Cold War for the new buildup for the next phase. And this is more like Hitler and Stalin uh, dividing Poland before uh, official World War II broke out and Hitler double-crossed Stalin in Operation Barbarossa. Uh, so that's what I see happening. So I don't lionize the West or the uh, Putonians, I guess you could call them. Uh, but clearly that area of Ukraine has pretty much always been part of Russia. This is a replay of World War II with Eastern Russian Ukraine battling uh, Western uh, European Ukraine. Uh, and so that's why you see the same players uh, there. So I see it more as the globalists just wanting turmoil to consolidate control. Well, you've got to remember, the globalists are playing both sides always have. They've been building up Russia while they pretend to fight Russia in a Cold War, building up China while they pretend to fight. Same thing happening here. It was a propaganda lie when Victoria Newland said that they'd put $5 billion into Ukraine. That was the entire budget for all of Eastern Europe. You can't put $5 billion into a country like Ukraine and not have it show up in the banking system. In other words, she was propagandizing, speaking to a pro-Ukrainian rally. Uh, but there's no way that they injected that directly into Ukraine. And George Soros, is, being a globalist leader, is basically feeding the fire within Russia and others to get people who want to believe this was a Western coup. But you see, the U.S. knows, the, US, the media knows that the coup went back to the barracks. The media knows the party of regions unelected their own leader. Nobody in the press has asked why and how did that happen and how did the Western opposition do that? Until someone answers that question, my proof stands. This was a ruse, that just like the phony fall of the Soviet Union was a deception. The phony coup in Ukraine is a Russian coup and that Poroshenko and Yevchenko are working for the Russians and sabotaging. That's why Poroshenko... Uh, uh, you know, has all his friends are Russian oligarchs. That's why he betrayed the Eastern Russians after with his campaign promises. He refused to let them speak Russian uh, in Eastern Ukraine. He enraged them. He sent in mercenaries 
to attack his own people, to betray. So that Russia could then look like the savior coming in and taking over. Yeah, in other words, they've been sabotaging. This looks like, and, I'm, and I've got the proof, as I say, that these pro-Western leaders are actually still working for Russia, just like Timoshenko was working for Putin. Well, I mean, it's on control. record that the entire leadership of al-Qaeda and ISIS is working uh, for NATO, working for the U.S., working for Turkey, working for Israel, working for Pakistan. I mean, it just keeps coming out. So that would fit the, uh, the paradigm. That's right. We have to look deeper than the obvious on these things. And going back to this, I still think that the trigger for World War III is not going to be Ukraine. It's going to build up Russia as the hegemonious uh, uh, enemy right across the border from Europe, and it's going to allow Europe to... But I think we're going to see just like uh, uh, happened in Yalta, just like what happened in Munich, we're going to see them continue to pamper and be permissive with the Russians right up into the war. But the actual trigger probably started North Korea has to be a reason why the Western governments continue to sure. be permissive with North Korea compared to Iran. Um, there's going to be a war in the Middle East with Iran as soon as Syria is uh, you know, taken down uh, with Israel attacking Iran. But ultimately, I think we have time. I think this war is going to cover for the uh, uh, excuse of getting the entire West into a militarized global government. I think we're, that's where all this is leading. But I don't think it's imminent. I think this is going to take time. You're going to see Ukraine mature for another year before they move into the Baltics. And the reason I say that is that Russia and China still need more time to continue to build these weapon systems that they're in the process of building right now. And we are going to continue to disarm, which is suicidal. But as you said, that's to entice the attack when the whole secret project just like That's NASA's 80% right. secret, the military, what we see of the military is not really the main military. What we see is more of our U.N. occupation force uh, military that's 30 years old. That's right. Our, our government has secret weapon systems they're developing. They're going to allow this a nuclear attack on American military forces uh, so as to justify getting us into a new world order. They need our American military forces to be taken down in order to rampage or get us into a militarized global government. But then they're going to pull out, I think, these secret weapons, probably space-based anti-missile weapons that are really effective with warheads on them, unlike our current crop of ABMs. And they're going to hold back the Russian and Chinese nuclear attacks while they regroup. And I think there's going to be a... But the Russians and Chinese are smart. They know about all the secret weapons. I'm not sure they do. I think they suspect that's what's kept them at bay for many. That's why they're still skittish about attacking. Uh, but I don't. I mean, think don't they, they know. didn't they see how we set up Japan uh, to attack? I mean, I mean, they got to know that's how the West and the British intelligence operates. Yeah, you know, you would think so. Uh, but you've got to remember that the Russians and the Chinese have, as part of their strategic blood, they must attack the West. They do want to take down the West, so they're not going to be deterred. They're just looking for how much more can we build before we're confident enough to take them down. And I think, you know, with PDD-60, which they also have got to know about, PDD-60 tells our nuclear forces not to expect to launch on warning, but to expect to absorb a nuclear first strike. That was 1997. I think that was a telegraph message. Don't expect to get the codes to be able to launch against the first strike. You're going to absorb a first strike. Yeah, and they took the launch codes that. away from the sub-commanders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then they, you know, had that agreement with Clinton, with the Soviets. It was just a one-sided agreement. We're going to keep 50% of our missile submarines in port at any one time to make sure that you can target it more, more easily to show our good intent that we have no offensive attempt. But as you know, there's a lot of hidden secret nukes that the United States has. I mean, everybody cheats. We... I'm convinced that the globalists have a plan to win this after they absorb a nuclear first strike on our military. But remember, the cities are not the target. The Russians and Chinese want to blackmail us into submission, not destroy the markets that they depend on. So I think the globalists know that. This is a very complex scenario, I understand. 
of people's reluctance to want to maybe see well, this. Well, it's kind of a paradox. The, they need our military to be kind of the U.N. global force. They want to build up NATO as the new U.N. army. That's admitted. That's who they keep using yeah, for these right. U.N. operations. But they know inherently one of the only cores of Americana, even though our military has been part of these evil wars, is the military. They know the military is the most awake group of the globalist conspiracy. That's why they want to coup d'etat them in a nuclear attack. Yeah, I think you're right, Alex. Well, that fits in because they absolutely hate the military. Look what they do to them with these secret death lists and all the rest of it. We didn't get to get into social issues. I want to have you back soon to do that because I want to go to phone calls, as promised. Brandon in Texas, you're on the air with Joel Skousen. Go ahead. Yes, sir. First and foremost, God bless both of you guys. I'm a huge fan. Um, my question is, um, whether it's a global war or some kind of economic collapse, um, we hear a lot about collecting gold and silver coins, so on and so forth, for use for barter, but how would that really be any use to another person that's, you know, up a creek just like me or anybody else in that event? Wouldn't it be more useful in, in that case to stockpile things that people will need, like something that's made out of unobtainium, like a twenty two ammo nowadays, I'm sure you guys noticed, and maybe even just for comfort, like something along the lines of cigarettes. I don't smoke them, but maybe I should buy some or little bottles of whiskey. What do you think about that? Well, I think precisely uh, that stockpiling things that, that remove your future need for money and provide barter items is really your best option. But remember, too, that cash will be king. I predict that there will not be hyperinflation before this war comes. They're going to continue to try to keep things down below 10%. Thus, you can hoard some cash. But believe me, there won't be any cash printing when war starts. Uh, and so cash will be king until it starts to run out and then prices rise because of shortages. That's when gold and silver become more valuable when prices rise because right now you, can't, you wouldn't be able to get change for a $2,000 gold coin. I like silver dollars as the premier uh, barter coin just because they're big and fat and heavy and they're legal tender. People don't have to determine whether or not this is a real coin or not. I think if you're going to stockpile anything, silver dollars is going to be the best one other than, I mean, rather than quarters and dimes that are silver because they look too much like what's out there existing. So silver dollars, cash will be king first of all, then silver dollars. Uh, but ultimately, in the long term of this war, and there's going to be starvation, there's going to be famine for a couple of years, you've got to be able to get out of those urban areas, and you're going to have to have stockpiles sure. to use and to trade, especially things that are usable like light bulbs, like glues, screws, ammunition. Those Shortwave radios, and let's just say it, Joel, you, you know. People will do anything for liquor once this all goes down. People could argue it'd be immoral, but the classic barter item would also be like things like whiskey. Well, you know, the so-called, um, who is it, the Bosnian guy who's promoting his wares about survival uh, is talking about, you know, cigarette lighters were key. Well, they aren't here in the United States. In Europe, people still smoke like chimneys, but not here. So it's not going to, uh, smoking is not going to be a barter item like it is in, in Europe. Uh, liquor may be, but I still think a lot of Americans will need food, um, and things to repair things quicker than they'll need liquor. I was about to say, somebody that's got their own solar power and wind power and like a tinker repair machine shops, those will end up being little mini cities during a full collapse, right? That's right. You know, and the Bosnian guy claims, well, nobody used any cars, but that was Bosnia. Those were high-density urban areas. Out here in the West and things, fuel will be king as well, and you will be able to sell fuel uh, like gold someday. So there's a lot of things that you can stockpile that are, uh, I think, more useful ultimately than gold and silver. Oh, absolutely. Fuel out in uh, areas that aren't dense will be king. Brandon, does that answer your question? Uh, pretty much. Um, I have maybe a little bit of a continuation of that question. Uh, Mr. Skousen mentioned that uh, people should be getting out of urban areas, but wouldn't those be the most likely areas that the powers that be at the time would want to control and as we've seen in places like Somalia and others, that those are the places where they delivered the food supplies, where the, the rural areas were pretty much left to their own devices. Well, 
That's right, and that's why you want to be in the rural areas so that they leave you alone, basically, and have your stockpiles. Remember, you can't grow in urban areas. You are totally dependent on teamers. We've got to go to break. Supply. Stay there. We'll, we'll, we'll be right back. Malit are buying redoubts. We, we talked about this 15 years ago, but it was even the London Guardian last week or two weeks ago that elites are buying places all over the world in rural areas and putting in long airstrips so they can run from Europe and the U.S. Uh, most of the rich billionaires in Israel have left Israel the last five years. And we talked about this before it was known because we have a lot of sources. I know Joel does and I do as well, but he builds houses for you know, really rich folks and common folks as well that are secure. Uh, so they've been running to the hills. They're not running into the cities. Uh, the, those are the places you won't want to be during a collapse. You want to elaborate on that, Joel, before we go to Judy? Yeah, even the cities will not be able to be controlled by the powers that be. I mean, there's just, I mean, I don't even think policemen are going to show up for duty. Soldiers aren't going to show up for duty uh, because their families will be subject to mobs. Uh, it's just going to be chaos. And so people will leave the cities. It's a matter of preparing places before that happens so that you're not caught in the maelstrom. And, and know your neighbors. So if a group, you know, two years into a collapse comes over there, it'll be just like Road Warrior wanting to take over. You're ready to deal with them. The good part right. about areas that have the Second Amendment, though, I predict those are going to be areas that are a lot safer. What about areas where they've disarmed people like California and, and, and D.C., you know, that have cultures of just supine uh, worshiping of tyranny? My God, those are going to be carnal, charnel houses of hellish exploits by the criminal element. Absolutely. That's why in strategic relocation, you know, we rate different areas differently, especially by these criteria like Second Amendment, like the freedom to homeschool, freedom for uh, natural medical care, uh, as well as climate and other things. Uh, a lot of good information in strategic relocation that people ought to get. People should get the book and the film at InfoWarsStore.com. I mean, if people don't, I think they're insane. Uh, they're so, both of them are so well done, and we're honored to work with you on that. That's what the whole illegal alien open invasion is about. Uh, I mean, Obama is acting as a dictator, but notice the Republicans aren't challenging him, Joel. No, that's right. And there was a judge that had the guts to shut it down, and now the Obama administration is shopping for a judge to release that, uh, that order so that uh, the illegal agenda can keep going forward. But I think that's why the southern states are, have got a problem. Uh, you know, Texas, even where you are, you know, it's going to be a... A Mexican state one of these days, again, I think. Well, that's the globalist plan to get folks to vote uh, with the Democratic agenda. That's the plan. That's right. They want to water down conservative voting uh, patterns, and they're not going to stop this illegal flow no matter what we do. It's one of those things they don't take no for an answer. Judy in Florida. Judy, you're on the air. Welcome. Yes. Uh, hi, Alex. Hi. Um, I, I, in listening, I'm just really getting more and more concerned and frightened, really, about what is coming over our border, whether it's uh, the illegal aliens or uh, the Chinese that are coming here and having children. But all that aside... Um, well, it's because America's been totally sold out. I mean, we, we offer to pay for anybody's kids in the world, and this is the plan to turn us into a Tower of Babel. Go ahead. Yeah, and I know people that are perfectly fine with that, that I thought were real intellectuals and people that I thought loved this country, but they're just brainwashed, crazy people. But um, what I don't understand is, is how this is not really like a, a currency war that's taking place, and I guess this is my question, is how is this not really a currency war? Because isn't the Anglo-American establishment just looking for the boogeyman that they can blame when the financial collapse does occur? I mean, they want World War III, don't they, in full swing? And also, what do you say to the people like me and my family that are not going to be able to get to some type of armored redoubt and we're going to be stuck in mainland America, you know, with all the suffering? That's a good point. Um, Joel? Well, as I say, you know, the currency wars are continue to, uh, to go back and forth, but I'm going to tell you, the dollar will remain king. There's no other currency in the world that can replace the dollar. The euro would have to be inflated. Stay there. We're going to come back and finish up with that in overdrive and go to truth. Ben, Gregory, Aaron, and others. Stay with us. Joel Scouse is our guest. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Let's go to who's been holding the longest uh, here. Let's go to Ben in Missouri. You're on the air, Ben. Welcome. Hey, great to talk to you again, Alex. Um, and uh, your guest, as always, is uh, really informative. Uh, I wanted to say as well, I uh, got another bottle of Super Male Vitality uh, in the mail this past week after not having it for a few weeks. 
And, uh, you know, it's not like there was a problem before, but now there's not a problem. And then there's not a problem. And then there's not a problem. So that's, uh, <laughs> well, that's, and again, it's not a drug. It's not herbs that hype you up or anything. It's just herbs that get your glands naturally going. All of our glands have been suppressed by the additives and all the garbage. The testosterone of a 50-year-old man is half of what it should be on average. Uh, growth hormones are a lot lower than it should be. And it's just a fact that God's given us natural things of the earth that aren't drugs that have great results. So, so thank you. Super male and super female vitality are amazing. Thanks for the plug. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, like I was, um, was going to say, I actually live in a, a densely populated urban area. I'm in St. Louis City, uh, in one of the safer areas of St. Louis City. Um, my question for your guest is, what are the most important things to get before you need to bug out? So if the worst-case scenario happens, and, you know, obviously you make your preparations as you can, but say you only have enough you know, um, a truck bed to fill up. What are the things that he would recommend? I think the uh, most important thing, just to interrupt here, is to pick the right place you're going to go. Uh, and then to answer the other lady's question first, what do you do if you don't have money to get out of a major city, Joel? Well, I agree with you, Alex. It's not a matter of what you can carry with you out because you may have to walk out. That's why you've got to pick a place and have things stockpiled in advance or even if it's at a friend's house that's 30 miles out of the city you want to stockpile fuel you want to stockpile other things so that if you can get out uh you know and some people you know you can get cars old cars dime a dozen stockpiled at a friend's place so that even if you have to walk away then you can drive once you're out of the of the areas but the key is get your stockpiles uh distributed out so that they're not stuck in the city when you try to leave all right, caller, I'm going to jump. Thank you so much for the kind words. We got 20% off on the Super Male and Female Vitality products. If you'll just try them, we could fund our whole operation. If you try them, almost everybody that buys keeps buying. So in the equation, we get enough people to buy it, we're going to be able to really expand this operation because it's that good. Uh, Infowarslife.com. Uh, let's now go to Gregory in Illinois. You're on the air with Joel Skousen. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Alex. Hi, Joel. Um, hi. Mike. My question, I don't know, Joel, if you were the uh, guest of Alex that predicted that the Ebola outbreak was a stimulant, an Ebola stimulant. No, he's the one that and said that. He, 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 he thought it was a, a, a stimulant and not really Ebola. And, and they were yeah. just using it as a pretext to learn how to take over in an emergency, which Obama later basically admitted. So they, they were dragging people away, but it was all just to see what we do. Basically, Joel? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't intended to become the major plague. Uh, they were trying to uh, invent other strains that are more suitable for biological warfare, but they were prepping the areas, and we say the measles thing right now is prepping people for mandatory vaccines. So it's just all PR brainwashing events, because the doctors were seeing people disappeared. We had them on the show, but who knows what was going on? I mean, we just know there was a cover-up. Anything else, Gregory? Yeah, what I was wondering if it really was a stimulant, because uh, that kind of like it, the story just kind of disappeared, and I thought maybe the uh, the, the virus or whatever it was uh, mutated faster than they thought it would. But they aren't telling us whether or not we're able to harvest uh, mutated forms. I'm sure they were trying. They were taking blood samples over everything, but it is dying now. The virus is dying out. Uh, most of those areas. Covered for and praise recovery. God for that. The scary thing is, is that AP reported in New Jersey, they have a secret Ebola center that locals weren't told about. So we know they use it as a pretext to test medical tyranny disappearing people, just like with measles and the four shots. Worldaffairsbrief.com. That's Joel Skousen's site. Get his book and film at InfoWarsStore.com and support the broadcast. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Alex.